I spent 10 years in law enforcement. Most of those were occupied uh, in the United States Secret Service. I worked in uh, small and large teams and special units and you know it always created a, a bit of adventure for me. You know, everything was a challenge both mentally and physically. We started when he was just born. I started traveling a ton uh, and I traveled in excess of 200 days a year. Going from city to city to city, maybe from country to country, and there was a profound loneliness after a while. And I could just remember this ex exorbitant amount of, of loneliness that would just kind of invade my space and say, you know, we were created for community, we were created for family, and I'd always be missing mine. I was sitting in a hallway in Baltimore, Maryland. I remember it like it was yesterday, guarding a, another nation's executive head of state. And I was sitting in a, in a a really nice hotel hallway at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. I made the decision then, after being away for two or three weeks, several assignments, listening to stories from my wife and children back home, just you know, doing life. I made the decision then, and this was about six months before actually officially leaving. But I can remember just that being a solid, uh, concrete confirmation that, that I've got to do something different here. David made the decision to step away from his position in the Secret Service. He joined the ministry, and in December of 2013, his journey led him to Colorado to spend more time with his family and his son, Parker. One of our real big desires and our, one of our intentions on coming out here, really to, to, to spend a significant amount of time with Parker and my three other children as well. He wasn't there for my, my birth. I always hold that against him sometimes. Since he has been back, he's just been working so hard with just trying to get out in the mountains with our whole family. Not only did David want to spend more time with his family, he also helps dads and sons find a place to connect. He's working with the New Life Men's Ministry to create a camping trip for fathers and their sons this July. Well, I think there's something unique about when a father and a son go off into the unknown. I think there oftentimes breaks down a lot of what we know to be true and normal and safe. And so just the mere fact of getting out and, and getting outside of your routine, there is a clarity that happens. And oftentimes between the ages of 10 and 18, there's so much activity in our kids' lives. Sometimes that intentionality, that closeness is missed. And so my hope is going out on July 17, and with a bunch of new life dads and their sons would re-engage this process of intentionality. This journey has made an impact on the Johnsons. It was a sacrifice for him to leave a job he loved, but he's grateful for every minute he gets to spend with his family. And his family is so thankful for all he's done. I, I think back over the last 10 years, there's been moments of, you know, are we doing the right thing? After all the, the maybe questioning and frustration, of making a hard stop and a complete 180. I think if that decision wasn't made in 2006, then the result, watching my oldest daughter graduate this year, seeing my son being raised and grow in leadership and passion for the things of the Lord, and then seeing my younger two kind of look up to the older two and say, well, we want to be like that. And so for us, there's no greater joy or accolade that you could possibly bestow on someone. I am super proud of you, Dad. I love you, and I would never want a different dad in the whole entire world. <laughs>